hello friends welcome back to my channel if you are new here i am antonia jade and i run a small jewelry business called set the tone london check it out also if you're not subscribed make sure you click the subscribe button down below so today we're going to be talking about how to work with influencers for your small business and creating pr packages and all that jazz so my first and probably the most important step i would say is to choose the right influencers that you want to work with don't just look at the followers don't just look at the likes don't just pick them because they're super famous or because they've they're really popping think about if their brand and their page aligns with what you're selling on your business like for me for example i sell jewelry i'm not going to go on a fitness influencer who's got a million followers and say hey can i send you earrings when they never post jewelry because they're always in gym wear so you really have to think about if it even aligns with your brand when you're choosing an influencer look at their engagement you can do it in a number of ways i personally look for comments to see how engaged their audience is because you can have someone that has a million followers if they get 10 comments and all the comments are like amazing photo thumbs up great photo thumbs up send us a dm to be an ambassador thumbs up like mm -mm, they're bots people still be buying comments people still be buying likes and followers so stay away from those pages when you're looking at comments make sure it's real people commenting that is sort of conversational or personal and all that sort of stuff so you can tell when the influencers audience is actually engaged and how they receive those posts so another really helpful way to check influencers engagement is to go on a website called social blade there's loads of other ones but social blade is free so on social blade they show you the engagement percentage of the influencers instagram page so a very good engagement is like six to ten percent anything above that is absolutely fucking superb like i feel like influencers like nella rose molly may they probably have a really high percentage like probably over ten percent because their followers are super engaged the average sort of engagement rate i think is three to five percent that's sort of an average percentage and i know that like three to five percent seems quite low like that is why is it the average but obviously we all know that there's ghost followers people don't want to be commenting don't want to be liking some people don't use their instagrams anymore there's loads of different factors that make people's engagement quite low and um, nobody's ever going to have 100 percent engagement it's just the algorithm does not work in our favor so three to five percent is a good decent amount this video is kindly sponsored by skillshare if you don't know what skillshare is it is an online learning community where you have access to thousands of different courses from photography graphic design social media branding everything you can think of there is a class there for you i've been using skillshare a lot especially now i have my own business it's really important for me to learn new skills and learn different things i'm currently enrolled on the social media marketing top tips for gaining followers and going viral course which is really helping me to figure out a social media strategy which can be really good when creating pr packages and to reaching out to influencers to gain more followers and gain more traction to your site and your store so i do have a special offer for you guys of course the first a thousand people to join using the link in my bio will gain free 14 day access to the whole of skillshare and all the thousands of courses you can see what you like test and trial it and just have some fun learn some new skills so yeah once you've picked out your influencers you've written your list down you feel like they match your brand you feel like their engagement is good enough for you the next step is to write a brief slash contract so this is really important i feel like a lot of small businesses this is where they go wrong and then this is where the sort of influencer hate and reluctancy to work with influencers then becomes a thing because businesses especially small businesses don't write out briefs and contracts for the influencers if it's not in writing it has no value judge judy taught me that and it's something everybody needs to remember in life everything needs to be in writing and you need to agree on it otherwise it is void and it's your fault if the influencer doesn't deliver when you're creating a brief there's loads of different ways to make a brief and to have it you can either have it super simple and flexible or you can have it quite structured quite tight quite strict you need to make sure that you outline what it is you actually want from the influencer what the deliverables are so if you want a story from them how many stories do you want do you want a swipe up do you want three frames 
um, an IG feed um, post, like an IG normal post? Do you want a TikTok? Do you want a reel? Do you want a YouTube video? You need to specify what it is that you want the influencer to do because then they can decide whether it is worth their time to do, if they have time to do it and all that jazz. And then once you've decided on the deliverables, set a deadline for when you want the influencer to post. If you don't specify when you want them to upload the picture, they might be thinking, oh, well, I've got loads of shit to do, so I'm not gonna upload this. It's not on my list of priorities. So if you say something like, we require the Instagram post to be posted within one week of receiving the product, they, the influencer then knows that they have one week from receiving the product to upload their post or whatever the deliverables are. If you don't give a deadline, you can't really be angry when they don't post it in the time frame you want because you haven't specified it. So make sure you specify when you want the post or whatever it is to be uploaded. In the brief, you can include how you want the picture to be taken. You can show some examples, like you can screenshot some examples of some pictures, either from their page or from your page that you would like them to recreate for the post because they might create something that you can't really reuse on your page, it doesn't really fit with your aesthetic on your brand, or it just doesn't look the way you want it to. You can't be like, well, I don't like that picture, can you take it again? Unless it's really bad and you're in a contract, then of course you can. But if it's you haven't really specified how you want the picture to be taken, then you can't really be mad. If you don't ask, you won't get simple. Okay, so contracts. This is also where a lot of people go wrong. They don't do contracts with influencers, especially when it's paid. Make sure you are getting a contract. You can go online and type in influencer contract template. You can copy and paste um, the terms and conditions and all that stuff. Adjust it to what you feel like suits your brand. Add the brief in, what you want, the deliverables, when they need to be uploaded, etc. Because as I said before, if it's not in writing, it holds no value. It is okay to do a contract with an influencer. Because then that kind of holds them legally responsible to fulfill this post and it will scare them a little bit. With me, I have had um, gifting without contracts and I've had gifting with and sometimes I forget to post the gift in or I don't make a post or whatever, especially if they haven't required me to do it. But if it's in a contract, I'm like, oh shit, you're not about to take me to court. So I make sure when it's a contract, it feels a bit more professional. It feels a bit more structured and it is more, it's a bit more scary. Like it's a bit more scary. So, so the influencer is more likely to fulfill the request if you have a contract because it is legally binding. For me personally, on the other side, as an influencer as well, I do feel like gifting contracts are, they're not as common because it's gifting. So the person kind of has the right whether they want to upload or not. Whereas if it's paid, obviously you have to have a contract because money is involved. Although as a business, you are still spending money. Um, having a contract for gifting, not many brands do it. But I would still recommend it, especially if you're putting a lot of your money and stuff into the PR package and it will just make you feel a bit more comfortable having the contract. But I would make it a little less strict. Um, so give them a bit more time to post, deadlines a little bit more flexible and all that sort of stuff because you're not paying them. So now you've chosen your influencers, you've got your brief and you've decided the deliverables you want and you've written up some contracts. The next step is to work out your budget. So with any business, it's really important to set yourself a marketing budget, whether it's monthly, quarterly, yearly, whatever it is, set yourself a budget, especially for influencer marketing. First, you need to work out the value of the products you are sending, how much you are willing to spend on each influencer solely on the product. So for me, for example, if I wanted to send each influencer two anklets, I know that each anklet is £20. That's £40 worth of product I'm going to be sending to the influencer. So I need to then work out, can I afford to send 10 influencers £40 worth of products? Because then that is £400 worth of products I am sending out. And then if you are doing a PR package, so for me, I'm doing PR packages, self-love PR packages. So I have created um, personalised face masks. I've added in some bath um, crystals. I'm going to be adding little cookies. And then I have the two products that I'm going to be sending out. I need to work out how much this is all going to cost me and how many people I'm going to send it out to and if it is within my budget and if I can afford it. 
so now if you're adding in paid collaborations with influencers you're going to definitely need to set aside a bit more money for your budget i would really recommend if you're a small business you don't have a lot of budget to pay influencers to really focus on micro and nano influencers which i think is like 50 to 30k and below because even though they might not have a lot of followers if they have great engagement you might even get more sales from a micro or nano influencer than you would from someone with 500k so don't feel like you have to go for the biggest influencers and that you have to spend loads of money gifting is perfectly fine and just a word of advice return of investment is never guaranteed with any marketing strategy it's never guaranteed so you might pay an influencer a thousand pounds for a post you might not get a thousand pounds worth of sales but that doesn't mean that you are never going to get a thousand pounds worth of sales from them because people might not buy immediately but they might be in the back of their mind they might be waiting for payday and then last but not least is how to reach out to influencers I personally would recommend doing an email rather than a DM because a lot of DMs can get lost. The influencer might not see it. They might not check their DMs regularly. Seems a bit more professional. It's a bit more trustworthy. And I would personally prefer to receive emails versus DMs. And then you can just link your Instagram or your website in the email so that they can check out the brand to see if they like the product or you can send a dm as a sort of prompt to an email so you can say hey we've just sent you an email we would love to collab please check your emails or hey could you send us the best way to contact you so we can talk discuss a collaboration so yeah i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope it was helpful give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and yeah let me know in the comments below if there's any specific business topics you want me to cover in my next video for this little boss babe series and yeah i will see you in my next video